about to open a window into the life of a ghost hunter. We'll show you dark, creepy roads that fade into the night. We'll show you haunted places, but most importantly, we'll show you what happens along the way there. I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. I'm David. And here we are in a Walmart parking lot with a lot cop behind us. Now, what is the <laughs> deal with this lot cop? Dude, I, I couldn't tell. I really don't know what they do. I have no idea what they do. I was thinking maybe it's surveillance. Like, yeah, I'm, they I'm do have some cameras yeah. way up there. I'm thinking maybe yeah. it's like some kind of surveillance system that's powered by like a solar panel or something right. like that. Right, yeah. With a blue flashing yeah. light so the people across the parking lot will somehow mistake it for a police officer way up in the sky? Right, that's I'm not sure. pretty yeah, much maybe, like permanently here. Maybe not here. do, you know, yeah. drugs, you know, drug deals in, you know, Walmart parking lot, you know? Right, yeah. right, because yeah, like the cameras, yeah. those cameras up there aren't good enough. Yeah. <laughs> so we're down here in Norfolk, heading out to Virginia Beach for an investigation of residential. Not sure what we're gonna be able to release on that yet, but we'll find out. I gotta say with these coffee lids, you have the option of the black lid that has a little hole in the top. Right, or and the white with, lid. Or the white lid. Yes. And the, the black one with the little hole in the top, uh, I'm always concerned that when I'm drinking out of it, it's going to leak out of the edge. Right. And Whereas it does. It does sometimes. Yeah. It's like dribbles down your chin a little bit and, you know, it's just something it about burns. the positioning of the hole. It does. It does burn. But that right burns, here, you get, the, you get the coffee right yeah. off, like right off the edge of the cup. You know what I mean? You don't have that little excess. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, Megan. Hi. There's Me Megan. Where'd you come from? Here. Oh, no. Ah! So we're here in Virginia pose. Beach. David was going to do the pose. And, uh, <laughs> we're at this private residence where they've been living here for about 10 years, maybe nine. Some interesting stuff going on. Some orbs that have been picked up on their camera. We're going to see if we can find out what those things are. And some figures that have been moved facing each other. And a slave in the shed right out back yes. yeah. that yelled at the sun to leave it's a shed or it's a garage or it's something like that but uh we're gonna we haven't gone back there to see yet we just know it's behind the house um, but the sun was yelled at when they first moved in here mm -hmm. so we're gonna poke around here tonight and see what we can find should be interesting said if i'm not mistaken this is a <laughs> lowe's lumber <laughs> as you, you can tell oh, you got some lowe's lumber you can there, tell huh? it's lowe's lumber because of the way that it is lumber. I'm a lumber man. Not sponsored by Lowe's. I wish I was. There's this little high pitched voice that keeps coming through and I can't understand it. Find me. Find me. Did that say find me? Whoa, what was that? That definitely said dangerous.
How many entities are here right now? Is it a whole bunch? What? Do you want us to leave? You want us to stop bothering you? Do y'all keep hearing like every every so often like you hear like something far off in the distance on that thing? But, like it sounds like something's trying to come through, but like it just doesn't fully project itself yeah. through there. Yeah. Hear it like every now and then it'll be mm -hmm. like like, like a part of something. Naked silence. It's not moving that garage. I'm like, I mean, run in there. Jumping them, running there. You can open the door. You can open the door. Where else do you go besides here? Where was your house? figures for us. We heard you're able to move them. Would you do that now over here so we could see it? It would let us know that you're here. Yeah, either move one of those figurines or do something. Something so that, you know, we have a sign so that Can you tell us where those figures came from? <laughs> what? Did it really say the store? <laughs> Is that what it the store? <laughs> Which store? Can you tell us what country they came from? There's right. nothing. No, there is no, nothing here. Nothing. There is nothing. Because me and her both did it. So there is. We had two of these things going through there. There's not a single spike. Nothing. nothing. Was there. And and you can clearly see the things just going off. Oh, that's Pretty insane. Good. Or did she turn it off? Yeah. I mean, it's just. Okay. That's wild. And I mean, we've been all sitting here in the same place the whole time. We haven't moved cameras or moved phones or anything. It's kind of relaxed. And it just now started going off. So that tells me it's probably not anything that was... It was dead in here. Or, yeah. Now, wait a minute. Did the AC just kick on? Yeah. AC just went on. So where's the AC? Not near here. There's got to be electrical wiring underneath. There's got to be something underneath the house. Did we put wiring down here? I thought but it's in the middle. There's but it's no got to be. Here. It's got to be something under there. There's no wiring. 
There's no wiring? There's no wiring right there. No, because no. me and him wired the house, and it's not here. And it's going off in here, too. Wouldn't there be an electrical surge when the AC comes on, though? It just stopped. Just uh, stopped. You picked it up. Oh, they picked it up. Yeah. I think what we'll do is maybe take a look under there, see if there's anything we can see even around that would even be giving off that feel under the house. Oh, boy. What do you see under there? Um... Some dirt. <laughs> dirt. <laughs> Unless you're willing to go down there, I'll knock on the floor for you. All right, let's give it a go. So here we are in the crawl space. You can hear the EMF detector right up there. Yeah. And there's nothing. Like there's no wires. The closest thing is this pipe right here. Yep. I see nothing. There is only water pipes. Right. Over here, I mean, it's all this coax cable doesn't have any nothing to it. I don't see why it would, right? There's these cables down here, but these, like you said, they're they're not live, you know, right? Or they're they are, but they're, they wouldn't cause this much action, I don't think. I mean, I can hear this thing like literally right above my head here. Right here, pretty much. Yeah. But there should be nothing. It's not even near these cables. Hardly. No, and, and it's important to, to note that all these orbs that are flying in front of the camera right now, it's pretty much dust. Yeah. It really is. It's not anything paranormal. No, by far. It's very dusty down here. Oh, you got it like, oh. look at it, their hair. <laughs> yeah, and that's where, uh, that's where some of your finest orbs come from. That's right. Yep. Dust. And dust off your butt like this because your butt's covered. Yeah. Really? I get my hands off. I know, I hate, like, I, I, like, even in the shower, I'm like, I can't stand my hands all soapy. I have to rinse my hands off before I rinse my, the rest of me <laughs> off, which doesn't make any sense at all because you're going to rinse it off, but whatever. <laughs> it's, just, it's annoying. I don't like it. You got something burning right here. There was nothing under there, though. That's not amazing. It's got to be something. Hmm? I mean, you see when I get to the left, see? It stops. When I get to the right, it stops. <coughs> but when I go this way, it continues. I go yeah. to the left here, it stops. All right. So, you determined that the EMF field goes the length of that copper pipe that's on the right there. It does, and it Correct. does appear, yeah. And this actually, this probably supplies the tub. So, so this would be the faucet. This would be your cold, maybe? It'd be the hot and cold. The hot and cold, yeah. The big one. So it's... Yeah. Both of them. Is it going off now? When you put it down here, it is. But it's not going off when you touch it up to the pipe? No. Nope. That's weird. It's so, something under... It, but, yeah. but that pipe right there, you said, goes under here, exactly where yeah, this EMF exactly field does go. Yeah, exactly the run of that. All right. Try to, so hold on. So right now the light is off in the or the light's on in the bathroom. Right. Right. And when the light turns off, that's when it starts up. So it has to do. So I get the whole thing in there. In there. Yeah, right. it's got to have something to do with the electrical wiring feeding the bathroom. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. It is indeed the copper pipe. The copper pipe, the copper pipe is. Yep. Take it down. It stops. Okay. Roll over and look under the center beam there. 
to the flooring center. So here we are in front of a Wawa and uh, after the investigation, an interesting investigation which may be uh, available as an episode of Virginia Paranormal Case Files. Depends if we got enough footage or not, I don't know. But we got to see an ice box that was inside. Took oh, our yeah. picture with it. Oh yeah. Which was pretty cool. It's always right. a, a rewarding investigation when you get some ice box pictures. You know? It's all worth it, just for the oh, ice. Yeah. It's always a win, you know? Right, right. That's what I'm in it for. The <laughs> ice. The ice. The so ice. Linda, what'd you get to eat over there? <laughs> so we got um a sourdough melt and this is the cheesesteak, spicy cheesesteak, was it oh, called? Let's I take a look at it. I don't really remember. Box up there and let's see what you got. It looked really good. See? Cheese oh, steak. Man, look at look, that. Look, it's got like red prep peppers and provolone, melted provolone cheese. Yeah, and actually, you know what? Pretty good. The bread is perfect. Normally at Wawa, they over toast the bread and it makes it really hard and kind of crunchy I hate around the, the crust. Bread. I do too because it like cuts your mouth, especially mm -hmm. the sourdough. Yeah. It like cuts the roof of your mouth. But this is perfect. This I'm so excited about yeah, this. Yeah, it does look like a very good. Yes, texture that's it on that is bread nice there. and soft yep yep just the right amount of, of firmness to the to the crust and oh this is a good part here garlic aioli mac and cheese oh, they have man. this garlic mac and cheese I really like Jeff I think you got the buffalo kind, I did right? get the buffalo kind and I'm eager to tear into that of course yes now Megan I notice you have something over here a very small sandwich that is a small sandwich you're almost <laughs> done I know we haven't even open the package yet and you're already done. Oh, it's really cute, Sam. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I look good, though. It look really good. It does look good. It does. It's very it good. This so I amazing. see you started on that sandwich there. It does look pretty good. I did. This is, Man, this is really, really good. Like, this is one of the best things I've had in a long time from Wawa. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to tear into mine here. Let's take a look, see if it looks as good. Yeah. Mm, I mm. see what you mean by the texture of the bread. It's definitely... Good texture on that bread. Oh, hold up. <laughs> wait a minute, let me do this. What? All I'm doing is I'm just gonna take a little bite. No, 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 wait. Just a little. Wait. Just a little bite. Wait I just want to. I want to taste though. the bread first. That's yeah. all. Just, a, I just want a little taste. Just a little sample. Right. Little yeah, sample. yeah. I want to try to taste the bread without getting any of the meat in there. If I can just take a little bite out of it, you know, just a little tiny. Mmm. 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 <laughs> well, it's a rainy day here on Interstate 64, and we are heading out to Roanoke, Virginia. Now there's a couple of interesting reports going on out there and we'll fill you in on that as we go along here. Hopefully we'll be able to videotape that investigation and release it. But this house that we're going to, it is, she said, over 100 years old. So we always like those older locations, which is, you know, usually, they usually have some history to them at least, which is yeah. pretty interesting. But... We've been contemplating some things along the way here. And we were talking about Yorktown and how haunted Yorktown is. And there's a place down there along the Colonial Parkway called Belfield Plantation. It's just remains now, it's just ruins pretty much. But what's interesting is you can't go back there. Now it's not owned by the Naval Weapons Station to our knowledge. It's actually owned by the National Park Service. However, the National Park Service has an agreement with the, with the Naval Weapons Station to keep this closed off as somewhat of a buffer zone. Right. Which we found pretty interesting. Yes. So this led to a discussion. The first capital here in Virginia was Williamsburg. And Yorktown, of course, was the biggest port at the time, one of the biggest ports. If you think about it, the weapon station's been there for a long time. The Coast Guard base has been there for a long time. And there's Camp Perry 
over here in Williamsburg, which right. is very top secret. Um, yeah. A lot of hush hush stuff they have going on there. Now, in colonial times, hypothetically speaking, if the government had contact with extraterrestrials, where would they take them? Yes. And we decided they would probably take them somewhere nearby to one of these bases like Camp Perry or the Yorktown Naval Weapons Station. Um, and another interesting thing is that the Yorktown Naval Weapons Station supposedly um, quite a few years ago housed nuclear weapons and they had this section of the base that from the air it looked like it was all just grass rolling grass but um, it was actually bunkers built down in there where they would store the nuclear weapons now they say that over the past few years of course we don't store nuclear weapons anymore there however there are still subtenders that go to the Yorktown Naval Weapons Station port off of the York River now, you know, why they're there, I don't know, but it would be a good place to be able to store a UFO or store some sort of alien intelligence without anybody realizing it, because the tourists go through there on the Colonial Parkway, they travel from Yorktown to Williamsburg or Williamsburg to Yorktown, and nobody would ever suspect that on that base that sits right up against the Colonial Parkway, there's actually UFOs stored there. So what better place to hide it? Absolutely. What better place to hide something than kind of in plain sight? Right. It's it's a big tourist area. Safe to say one of the biggest tourist areas in Virginia. Yes. And could there be UFOs, extraterrestrials, intelligence right there? Right. It would give them a reason to have high security, extremely high security, but then who wants to break into a place that they know has nuclear weapons? You're not ever going to catch somebody breaking in to a place like that. Right. A perfect know? reason for the security. Right. A way to keep them out. A way to explain the security. And at the same time, you've got this perfect hiding place. Right. So we're sitting here in the car. Kyle's back there. She is. I know. Kyle, where'd you come from? It happens every time. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old, right? So we're we're staking out a uh, location mm -hmm. right now, and it's kind of mysterious. It's a place that we've never been to before. And with places that you've never been to before, you don't really know what to expect. Right. It's like anything can happen. Yeah, it's it's mysterious. Could be good. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Could be terrible. It could be. Um, and we're not talking about any place paranormal by any means. Yeah. It's a restaurant. Yes. Called Lilo's Pizza. Mm hmm And we're trying to make out the menu from the car. Because the problem is with these places is once you go into them and you look at the menu and you don't like anything... It's, it's awkward. Like a, yeah, it is. It's awkward. You know, yeah. you don't want to just turn around and leave and be like, ah, you know, I, what do you say? You know what I mean? Especially <laughs> yeah. when they're standing there at the register waiting yeah. to take your order. And you're the only ones in the store. Yeah, and you look the at the menu and leave. You know, that's kind of, I feel obligated to buy something. Right. I mean, I've eaten at many of, uh, you know, poor establishments just yeah. because I already walked in the door and I... I really? Haven't you? No. You've I'll... never done that? <laughs> do you just turn around and leave? I... Just, oh, I, it's, yeah. it's really awkward because I'm already really awkward. Mm -hmm. But I just, I'm just like, and then I walk out the door. Or I'll be like, I forgot my wallet. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. One. I'll be like, oh, and then oh, you I'll get in right the back. car. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then you just leave. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, I like that idea. Well, we could do that. We yes. could. It we is kind of hard to see the menu from here. We could all say we forgot our wallet. <laughs> and then they see us climbing in the car and starting it up and put back and out. Well, on the bright side, it's like if it's if it's not a good menu, it's not like we'll ever be back here again. So oh, we'll never true. have to see yeah. these people again. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You know and what I mean? Actually, have, we've seen like five people just walk in and get a pizza to go. There, ha yeah, they do seem to do a pretty good takeout. Mm -hmm. So you know, with that being said, I, I would imagine they probably have some pretty good pizza it's sold by the slice. But what's going to be really awkward now, though, is the fact that they've been standing in there like looking at us. And I'm oh, holding this, yeah. looking like I'm, you know, they don't know. They probably think I'm videotaping them. They yeah. And yeah, then we're going to walk in there and be like, these people that were just videotaping us for five minutes. 
have, yeah, are coming in are coming here. Coming in to eat. They probably think yeah. we're like secret shoppers. Mm -hmm. Some of those people that come in and try maybe the food and really good see food. how oh, they are. Yeah. yeah, maybe they'll. Yeah, maybe we ought to do this more often. That's we should sit out in front of the location and just film them for a few. It's a good minutes. idea. Yeah. Even though we're not filming them, we're yeah, nuts. exactly. Them. But, but nonetheless, they don't yeah, know that. they have no idea. Oh, mm -hmm. let's go be awkward. Yeah, let's All try. Right. We're at a restaurant called Burrito, but it's Burrito. Oh. And it looks like it's a new chain. And it kind of is like the same concept as Chipotle. And so far, I mean, my whole bowl is quite a mess already because I just mixed it around. Look at it there. Yeah, it's a little juicy, what, but. What is in there? It is ground beef, um, jalapenos, cheese, lettuce, salsa, cilantro, beans, but it's good. So. Farm fresh, I saw on the door. That's what it says. Yeah. So I wonder if it's local or... Now you came in here and did some recon first, huh? Yeah, I did. I came in and I, I, I wanted to see if they had a menu we could check out in the car, but it turned out that they didn't have any menus. So I had to leave. Um, I'm going to let you guys know that it was kind of like the same concept at Chipotle, so this is what we chose. Got over there. Look at this. I see some. Now I don't know if I have food in my mouth. Got some smoked jalapeno salsa and queso. Some queso. Yeah. Um, I have a chicken burrito. You can get a burrito. You can get a bowl of rice. You can get a taco. Variety of different things. And you basically stuff it with anything you want. So I got the pulled chicken, which is actually really good, and uh, stuffed it with whatever I wanted. And and so far, it's really good. Very good. So I'm gonna do the unveiling of the steak burrito. That has some jalapenos, some black beans, white rice, uh, has some queso, some pico de gallo, and some habanero O with an O at the end. <laughs> and not like an O, like an O, like a zero looking O, but like an OHO. So this is it. And I uh, just wanna, it's a big burrito. You can see it's, it's a pretty. It's a big burrito. I if I could, I wonder if I could. Mm. <laughs> Is it good? That's a good burrito. So we're rolling here through. Where are we? You know what area we're in? I think it's close to Charlotte. Pretty close to Charlottesville. There's the kind of historical marker. But this fog is really yeah. like some serious fog out here. I mean, cars are driving past and they disappear about 20 feet ahead completely to where you can barely even see their taillights. Right. And like the lines on the road, you probably see about 15 feet. Yeah, and in some places it's it's far more dense than in others. Maybe we're starting to get out of it. You can see the taillights a little bit farther ahead now than you could before. But it is still some serious fog. There's strange things out in the night. And every once in a while, a random text may come through from an unknown stranger. That's a text that simply says, Stop. And that's what happened on the way here tonight. Just driving along. Yeah. Linda and Kyle are talking about ghosts and other creepy things for some reason. I don't know why they always talk about that creepy stuff. <laughs> it really freaks me out. But nonetheless, they were. And this random text comes through that just says, stop. Yes. And the weird thing was that Kyle noticed is that Jeff decided to call back the number. And when he called back the number, it popped up on the little digital display in the Ford Scape, and the last digits were 606060. So it was like 60, 60, 60, or 666, six, six, six. if you take the zeros out. And when the voicemail came on, there was no name. It was dead silence. It dead. was dead silence. silence. Like, dead. Like it said, if you'd like to leave a number or, and in the space where you'd say your name, it was just nothing. It just said nothing. So. And then a sign on the side of the road said Roanoke, and that's where we're heading to. Yes. So Could that be mean, a sign? Right. Did it mean stop talking about what we were talking about? Or did it mean stop driving where we were going? No, right. I meant could the sign have been a sign? 
for Roanoke. I'm pretty sure it was a sign. It could have been. Right. Yeah. like we had thought she hasn't even been back in that section of the house and that she was sitting out there talking with you the whole time yeah but even, I also, even when you two were just walking yeah right but then i mentioned that there was a light coming out of either the washer or dryer i couldn't tell which because they look exactly the same and she said there shouldn't be a light coming out of there because that usually indicates that the door of the dryer is open so if the it, and it wasn't on before so she said the door of the dryer is, is open and the light is on now where the overhead light is off. So now I really don't want to be back there by myself. <laughs> well, I can show you where the light is now. That would be okay. good. <laughs> Let's hope it stays on while yeah. I'm trying to use the body because I will freak out if it turns off. So we did an EVP session over in the living room where she's experienced a lot of activity and seen a lot of um, things flying around that's all I can call it really light anomalies flying around on her video and We sat there with the digital voice recorders and the periscope when we first walked in the periscope Was lighting up a little bit here and there we couldn't get it to do it again but as we were standing there we were asking questions and um, You know there were some things that sort of I think popped into Kyle and in, in my head uh, which was a little bit strange, but um, we didn't necessarily hear anything, but we kept, I felt like seeing something out of the corner of my eye. Um, and at the same time, Kyle said she had sensed something at the same place I had, I had seen motion. So a little bit strange. And uh, the client, I believe, has looked back on her video. Um, she hasn't said whether or not she saw anything in that corner at the time. But um, if we, of course, hear that she did, then we'll mention it. So we started in the main room that the client had um, has been experiencing a lot of orbs and other unexplained lights in her home security system. We had ran two um, voice recorders in there and we just started asking a couple questions, performing a, um, an EVP session. And prior, I'm sorry, prior to, to starting the EVP session, it's like it's burning my eyeballs. Uh, yeah, it's like the contact. Sorry. Yeah, I know, I'm not sure if it's getting too much. Let's see if I don't know. I don't know. But um, so, yeah, try to stand. In. We're good. Yeah, that's fine. Um, oh, sorry. When we were setting up, we did get a few spikes on the periscope at first. Uh, we didn't get anything after that. The first couple seconds setting up, so we started an EVP session. Linda and myself, we both started asking a couple unexplained questions that I think both we both experienced just kind of popped in our head if that made sense they were kind of random uh, we didn't hear anything with our own ears so we have to review the, the evidence on the voice recorders but there were also an incident there was also an instance where I had felt that I saw a quick movement or a sense somebody was kind of standing over by the corner of the room entering which would be the foyer the beginning the entryway of the house and Linda and I actually turned to each other at the same time, and she had said that she thought she saw something as well out of the corner of her eye in the same direction that I did. So the client is going to go back and review her video evidence to see if anything showed up on her um, her cameras. So we'll let you know if there's anything that pops up. Uh, any natural reason that that periscope would have gone off? Well, the periscope itself does measure the static electricity in the air, so if there was something that would have spiked some sort of static movement, um, that would be your explanation. But 
there was a laptop set up. Linda and I both don't really think that the laptop itself would be setting off static electricity towards it. No, I mean, it certainly would have had a little bit of a static charge to it, yeah. but uh, it's there wasn't motion, static no, motion. Yeah, not at all. And you do have to really kind of have static to make this little guy light up. I had to, I had to rub my hands. If yeah. That, yeah, and, and um, we did shut it, so we don't know if that could have been the cause itself right. or if it was just a some sort of unexplained spike in the beginning. So what we're gonna do next is, because the blind has caught some EVPs here in the kitchen on her security system, uh, we are going to set up for an, a spirit box session in here and see if we can get any communication through it. If not, we may try the EVP session again and see if we get anything from that. Right, I'm Jeff. I'm Kyle. That's Linda. And we have this little device set up here that you may be able to use to communicate with us. F yes, one, If possible, could you tell us your name, please? So we're out here taking a break, and I'm going to show you this app here. All right, what's um, it do? It's called Anomaly Alien Detector Radar. Looks something like this. And I'm going to go ahead and power this up here, and uh, it's actually a pretty cool app. It's supposed to let us know if there's any aliens in the area. Oh! It makes see you can see the little <laughs> little wheel going around there. Are you supposed to like aim it at the sky? No, you don't have to aim it at the sky. It's <laughs> it's like a radar. You know, it, wow. it, it just goes around the whole area. And what's the what's the distance? What's the the, the radius range on, on it? This yeah, one? it doesn't tell you. Um, it could be. I'm not sure about that. It's got to be pretty melon. high. It's got to be pretty high yeah. for there to be. You know, because aliens aren't going to be flying like that low, right? Yeah, it's got to go at least higher than the trees. I'm so sure. What, so what would happen if um, there's an alien around us? Would well, it like have a little dot on there? And I then... think so. Oh, hold on. Can we hear him too? I don't know. <laughs> sounds like something's coming through. It does sound like something's coming through, but... So what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this so far? Yeah. Do you believe it? You can be truthful. Um, no, not at all. <laughs> because it reminds me of the ghost app. The, the ghost, ghost radar. radar. Yes, the yes. one that came out a couple years ago that, you know, it's nifty, you know, looking right. at it, but how reliable is something that just spins in a circle like that? Right, and the funny thing about this is, um... Oh, I saw oh, an alien. Hold on. Oh. There it is. <laughs> can you see it? See it? There it is. I think it's bleeping red. So how close so is it? So it shows. To us, then? Ooh. Oh, there he is again. Look in the sky, Linda. But see, what I don't get is like if you're moving this thing around, then the blip should move with it, correct? As in stay stationary. Like okay, let's say I have it. West. Let's say I have it down like this, and I'm looking at it. Okay, mm -hmm. that means that back behind me somewhere, over my left shoulder, is this this alien. If I turn like this, it should be in front. It should be in front of me. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't move. Right. Mm -hmm. That's because the tablet doesn't. It's not hooked up to Wi-Fi. What is that? So what does it have to do with anything? What do you mean it doesn't hook up? So this, what's this thing running off of? Nothing. It's just it just downloads. But what is that? And I think you just. But it never point. did move it. See, I suddenly made that's the point. That's what I'm saying. Right? That what yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So if it's not running off a of Wi-Fi and it's not even run up on any kind of network, how could it be picking up aliens? I don't know. Maybe it's got some, like, maybe the sensors inside it still work when the Wi-Fi does not. See what I mean? Mm. The sensors inside it. But shouldn't, if that is the case, then wouldn't the blip move when I move? But are there sensors inside that capable of 
bouncing off a radar or something to pick up an alien in the atmosphere? I don't know. We still haven't figured out. And, and see, even though, though this shows a range from my point outward in any direction, mm -hmm. it does not indicate the height of the range. Right. How far up, what's the altitude mm. limit of this thing? Does it go up 200 feet? See what I'm saying? That's a good question. Does yeah. this button do anything? Oh. It makes stuff pop up. There we are. Look at that. Frequencies. frequencies. The app can automatically tune or scan for frequencies, stopping when it finds a signal. Ooh. So it's scanning for frequencies, for alien frequencies. Oh. But I can't send an email on it unless it's hooked up to Wi-Fi. Sure. Yeah, so you so. can find aliens, but you can't send an email. Right. Mm. It's got, it needs Wi-Fi. Makes sense. Did you have any neighbors when you lived in this house? How many homes were built around you? Do you like the changes in this, in this area? How old are you? Do you like to play games? Can you tell us who was standing on the stairs? What were you looking at when you were standing on the stairs? Interesting. I don't know if it's what kind of stock we can put in this, right? Mm -hmm. Seven came up three times, twice just random. And then the last time it said Elizabeth is, and then seven. Oh, that just hit. Oh. Is your name Elizabeth? And now there's an X. You can touch that again if you want to. That'll just light up and let us know that you're here. Sheets of art from um, well, it looks like they use people's artwork to put on the sides of the truck. Somebody is wrapping these these 18-wheelers with art, which is like two of my favorite things, like sheets and art wrapped in one. And I'm like really stoked. I'm going to have to take a picture, and I might have to submit something. You have to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It would be to have some of your own art. Right. Inside of a sheet truck. That's what I'm saying. That would be like the ultimate. So I'm going to take a picture so I remember everything and see what I can do. We have a plethora of Martin's potato chips. And I think I'm definitely going to have to partake in a bag of these. So here we are at that beacon of light in the night, sheets. And I have some boneless bites. I gotta say, I'm really eager to tear into these with some buffalo habanero something that's on them. Let's take a look at these right here. Oh, almost. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Tossed in the sauce. Yeah. I also found some beaded eggs. <laughs> uh, and some Martin's kettle cooked barbecue potato chips. I got a cup of coffee, but I didn't know where the spout was when you're getting creamer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so that one, um, everywhere but that's okay and then we got some chicken strips uh, you got the chicken strips I well. did, oh i did but i didn't you know what i didn't know what any of the toss them is mm -hmm. so i just got plain chicken strips with ranch okay not toss can't, sauce. yeah can't not go too time. wrong with that not this time. yeah right that donut? 
It is really good. I got them like as she was putting them in the case. Oh, man. Kind of donuts. Fresh delivered donuts. Very fresh, yeah. And they're soft and mushy. And, oh, very good. I just needed the sugar to stay away. So here we are at a Wawa somewhere outside of Richmond. Perhaps our last stop on the way back. Mm -hmm. uh, after a series of some interesting investigations and we're looking forward to seeing what kind of evidence we got those investigations will both be available in their entirety on Virginia Paranormal Case Files which is our little segments that we put out there dedicated to exclusively the investigations now I have a Mountain Dew amp because as you can see it's morning and I need to stay awake into the morning uh, to get home Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the uh, Mountain Dew amp might be my second Mountain Dew tonight, but it's going to help. <laughs> uh, hopefully. I usually get the kickstart, but I didn't see the kickstart in there. I'm not saying they didn't have it. I'm just saying I didn't see it. Uh, so I went for the amp. Hmm. So what are your thoughts? Um, I don't know. They have been a couple of very, very interesting investigations, I have to say. Um, I, but other than that, I think it's really, really late really early depending on how you want to look at it and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna make it home before I fall back asleep right I like to go down with the moon <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not even sure that like the moon's out <laughs> it's been very Gone. foggy I've never seen fog like that what was cool was on the way back after that last sheets we stopped at like they're ready for that fog up in the mountain they actually had lights yeah it, where you would normally see reflectors on the lanes, they had lights. Right, LED lights, yeah. All along the road, and that was really the only way you could see the road. I mean, yeah. the fog on the way up there was nothing compared to the fog on the way back. Yeah, it was, it was really crazy. Bad. It was really like, bad. You couldn't see a thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, this will conclude our venture, I believe. Mm -hmm. And until next time. Mm -hmm.